Yeah, thanks for having me, Adam, on, uh, on Reimagine. Really happy to be here. Uh, this is Scott Smiley. I, uh, I've been working with the Icon Project for over three years now. I've touched a lot of different pieces of it, uh, token economics, governance, high-level strategy, um, engaging with the community. And most recently, I'm focusing the majority of my efforts on the first DeFi protocol to launch on, on Icon, and that's, uh, that's balanced. Hello and welcome to Reimagine 2021. This is our ninth conference in a monthly series of events, bringing nothing but the best projects, bright minds, and leaders in the space. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to invite many talented individuals and teams to come speak with us, providing updates, insights, and all the above that's happening in crypto. Um, we've had a theme pretty much every month, uh, dating back to what the is DeFi, disrupting the system, tales from the crypto during Halloween. Happy holidays days uh, during the holiday season as far, and even uh, NFTs uh, just this last month. This month is a little bit different. We decided to go with this concept, um, Game of Chains Battle for the Throne, which is pretty interesting. And it's really just a concept that we wanted to talk to a lot of base layers, layer ones, layer twos, and not only the blockchains themselves, but the, the projects that are developing within their ecosystem. Um, so I'll be your host today, Adam, from the Mousebell team, where we focus on early stage investments, you know, through our accelerator and startup school, um, or providing development support to a number of growing projects, as well as education, which is critically just as important with, within the Mousebell University program. Um, our main objective and goals are simple. It's increasing adoption, use cases, and real world applications. Uh, I'm excited today. I have a, a, a repeat guest, a friend of the team, a partner of mine, a colleague, uh, Scott Smiley from the Icon uh, Network Foundation, uh, you, you name it, he's all about it, um, as well as, as you mentioned at the intro, um, uh, Balance Network, which is uh, one of the DeFi dApps building on top of Icon. Uh, they are one of our proud sponsors, super stoked. Uh, they've been part of all of our, our uh, conferences and events. So again, Scott, how you doing, man? Thank you for, uh, for joining and taking time out every day. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's doing, doing good here. And uh, yeah, really appreciate the opportunity to come back on and, and speak again. Definitely, definitely. You guys are you guys are pretty active. Uh, you know, you were guest speaking at, at one of our university events, and, and we've had a couple of your colleagues, obviously, on, on the uh, uh, d during the reimagine um, series. Uh, but today it's a little bit different. Um, you know, for all of those tuning in, you can go back to our past videos. Uh, to catch Scott talking with us, you can find him on YouTube discussing, you know, everything from crypto blockchain to not only that, like the icon and, and their community. Uh, he's pretty active in the space. So today I'm going to try to keep it fresh. Um, as I mentioned, we're talking to a lot of blockchain teams, a lot of projects, a lot of layer ones. We have people tuning in that are trying to still understand, like, what network to build on, like, what's the difference? What are the niches, right? Um, and hopefully today, after after talking with you, Scott, we can kind of come down to the bottom of, of what ICON really is, how it differentiates to, to others, and, and, and provide everybody else updates and insights to, to what's going on. So one, one of the things I want to get into is um, the, the evolution of ICON, really. You've been with the team for a long time. Right. So... I believe it wasn't EVM compatible. Now you guys are building, you know, bridges and, and you have this, this upcoming or, you know, what just recently launched or the, the BTP kind of project that you guys have been building uh, cross chains, right? So what's kind of the evolution? Uh, and maybe we'll take it from your perspective because at one point it was like, let's build a blockchain and like not worry about anybody else, build the tech, they will come. And there's kind of been this, you know, a kind of, uh, a tides have turned a little bit in terms of collaborating, you know, building bridges. So I want to get your thoughts on kind of Icon's evolution from, you know, this, this blockchain to now this like decentralized aggregator, right, of, of, of interoperability with, with various chains. So what, what's kind of, uh, what has evolved over the last few years? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I would say like um, in terms of evolution, things really started off with more of like a specific enterprise focus. Uh, in Korea, where it was going to be the ICON network was going to be kind of like the public settlement network of various different enterprise blockchains. And that's still something that's very much possible with the endeavors that uh, ICON Loop is working on. But since then, we've really focused just specifically on just interoperability in general, right? Like the ICON blockchain, um, once we launch ICON 2.0 and we deploy BTP, uh, the blockchain transmission protocol, that's our flagship product. Um, to, to connect different blockchain protocols. Once that launches, ICON 2.0 is going to be focused very narrowly on just uh, growing the BTP ecosystem and adding 
more blockchains to that ecosystem. Um, and then, you know, what we recently announced is that the application layer, like we'll still, Icon 2.0 still supports smart contracts. It's going to have jo uh, Java virtual machine, Python executor. So you'll be able to write in both of those languages. Um, but in terms of just like the focus of uh, the development teams, the Icon 2.0 development team is going to be focused much more on just optimizing the network for BTP, creating as low latency um, and reliable uh, cross-chain transactions as possible uh, and cheap as well would be, would be one of the goals. And then um, the ICE network, which we recently announced, is going to be using the Substrate SDK, and that's going to be our EVM and EWASM compatible layer which will be focused more on the application layer since there's so many existing tools and existing code base out there to build uh, D apps in, in solidity and, you know, kind of EVM compatible uh, architectures. Let, let, yeah. And let's kind of break that down. A lot of information there. Uh, you know, so many, so many, so many blockchains, um, so many technologies, and, and you kind of just touched on, on a little bit of everything. So let's kind of break that down and, and I'll let you kind of, uh, take it how you want, but let, let's break down either Icon 2.0 first or, or or BTP and kind of what, what that brings to the table as far as features goes. Right. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just say that at this point, those two should be considered one and the same, right? Like Icon 2.0 is a network that's going to be optimized for BTP. And BTP is our novel interoperability solution. Um, it's secure and decentralized compared to many existing bridging solutions, which are essentially multi-signature wallets with a handful of, you know, hand-picked uh, validators that secure it. Um, you know, I, I'm really excited for BTP, uh, both from a technological standpoint and kind of a community growth standpoint. And we'll get into that too. You, you as a community guy, you know, I've, I've been chatting with quite a few icon uh, leaders in this space and, and other projects and, and a lot, lot of good things. And we'll touch on that. Um, so who are you guys like bridging with or what, what are some of the other protocols uh, that you guys are, you talked about kind of Polkadot. Um, I think there's a few others in there. Uh, what, what were the decisions really to kind of, I guess, uh, partner or, or integrate with, uh, with some of these other chain, specific chains? Yeah, I would say like uh, the opportunity for cross-chain liquidity and like some, some level of adoption of, of their network um, because there's got to be or some level of traction is really more like it, right? Like there needs to be some applications built on there. DeFi specifically is kind of a use case that we're targeting. Me personally, I think that is, uh, you know, a killer use case for blockchain technology that we're only going to see continue to grow. So having some traction, uh, either the DeFi space or, or something that is going to have like a good, um, what, what is it? Good use case for, for cross some, some users, right? Some users, some volume. Yeah. And, and that's kind of like important. And, and I'll let you continue. Don't mean to cut you off, but yeah, sure. like people think that you just bridge uh, to whoever, you know, like uh, let's just for the sake of being interoperable with some chain, but there's a lot of fact and, and you're touching on them. There's a lot of factors that go into just not bridging with another blockchain, right? There's like underlying or fundamental principles that need to be followed in terms of like security, uh, privacy, you know, right. users, um, volume, whatever the case is. And those are strategic like bridges. Right. And, and I want to say like specifically, it doesn't necessarily need to be DeFi. It just happens to be a good example, but there needs to be some reason that you would use the uh, cross network uh, transactions and I think just a, a primary use case of that is, is essentially uh, cross-chain arbitrage in the same way that you have centralized exchanges that have different prices for the same asset. You can kind of withdraw from one exchange, go to another. It's going to be very similar to, uh, you know, cross-chain arbitrage between different automated market makers uh, for the same assets. And so what, what are some of the other, can you name some of the chains that you guys are uh, compatible with or? So the only one that we've named publicly so far is uh, the Polkadot ecosystem. We're working with several different parachains. Yeah. We do, do have a few more in the pipeline and nice. honestly, you're looking forward to just kind of sharing it and getting it out of the bag. You could, you could also check uh, our, our GitHub repo for BTP is open source. So there could be some information in there as well. Nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So in terms of like who we're specifically working with, that's, that's kind of not, uh, the only one I can, I can share right now is the Polkadot ecosystem. But in, really in, what we're trying to do in terms of who we work with, there's the strategic benefit uh, that we talked about just now uh, in terms of like utility for uh, a cross chain. But then there's also, um, you know, trying to cover different blockchain architectures 
right? Like EVM compatibility is definitely one architecture that uh, we, we have covered uh, through the Polkadot ecosystem. And then we're looking at, uh, you know, WASM as well. And then there's also different consensus mechanisms to, to consider. So like two pieces that uh, are important in a BTP integration is the virtual machine, right? It's a smart contract layer protocol. So, you know, being able to port the smart contracts from one network to another makes it really easy for integrations of the same virtual machine. And then there's consensus as well. So anyone that's using like, uh, you know, grandpa consensus is on Polkadot parachains. So it's really easy to integrate anyone else that's uh, grandpa consensus. Tendermint would be another kind of example of a standardized uh, consensus protocol that would make it easy once you implement one chain with Tendermint, it makes it easier to implement other Tendermint based chains. And, and was that the reason behind choosing Polkadot first? Uh, I, like I think some of the these factors or? Polkadot was that they had the EVM compatibility through the Frontier palette, plus, uh, you know, some good traction in their ecosystem with a lot of different projects to work with. I mean, and everyone was very supportive and helpful. Like I, I talked to a lot of different people in their ecosystem already, and it was really a uh, it's good, uh, easy to navigate. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And, and we can kind of maybe stand that topic a little bit in terms of like community. Uh, you're a big community guy. You're engaged uh, not only with, with, you know, with Icon, but with Balanced. Um, how, how important is it? How, how important is a community to like global growth, either for Icon or for Balanced? And, and, and community can mean a lot of things, right? It can mean, um, it can mean validators, it can mean stakeholders, it can mean users, token holders, right? There's kind of this, this developer community. How important are these factors, you know, for, for ICON? And you guys have had a strong community for years, a good following, uh, very engaged. Um, everybody's very proactive. So, like, how important is that for the growth of, of kind of your guys' ecosystem? I mean, I think that's extremely important for, for any blockchain ecosystem uh, you're we're essentially creating digital nations here is something that I've always felt passionate about, you know, laying down, uh, you know, the financial infrastructure, the governance infrastructure. These are, you know, I think there's just a lot of parallels there. Um, and having a strong community that's actually going to participate. I mean, you know, if you lay down the found, uh, foundation of this uh, digital nation and then it's a total ghost town and there's no one there, I mean, that it could, it could be the most amazing, vibrant uh, digital nation, nation in the world. If no one's there, it's, it's, it's going to be totally worthless. So, I mean, the community is really what gives uh, any blockchain network, any DApp, any value at all. It's really all it comes down to, in my view. And, and what are some of the factors in like achieving that? Is it just like a Telegram channel? Is it just like documentation, all the above? What, what have you seen from your success? Because um, you guys, you, you and, and your team have been pretty successful in, in this kind of uh, spectrum of rallying the troops and getting everybody on board and, and, and you know, executing what are some of the, um, the factors that you've noticed that have helped you succeed in terms of growing a community? Yeah, I think like uh, definitely um, spending the time to educate the community and work with them. Like, you know, when, when Balanced first launched or even was first starting to get traction, I was in the Telegram, you know, constantly. I mean, like the majority of my day answering questions and a lot of people are like, oh, it's like the same question over and over again. Why do you spend time? Blah, blah, blah you know, let, let someone else handle it, but like, you know, curating and fostering the growth of the community and from the start is like a huge way to kind of hit the ground sprinting uh, once the product launches and once it starts gaining some more traction. I mean, you need to have an educated base that's passionate about the protocol. They need to feel empowered. So I think like decentralized governance and giving like a lot of decision-making to the community, um, you know, of course, with some guidance, um, is really important. And I think it's really important to, uh, you know, curate toxicity, right? Like unproductive, un you know, like unproductive commentary and toxic commentary that can just like, you know, poison a telegram room in seconds. Like it just needs to be, just needs to be rooted out. It just doesn't help the growth of the protocol. It doesn't help uh, the growth of the DAO. You know, you really need, it's important to have that curated, focused, passionate community considering you know, especially when it's a DAO, they are the ones running, running the network for the long term, right? So, uh, you know, making sure it's a positive environment where people can have good discussion and, and actually make decisions is, is extremely important. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that's super important. Um, and I can vouch for you, man, I've seen my telegram alerts, like constantly <laughs> with, uh, with, uh, you know, discussions and Q&A and AMAs and, and just, handling, you know, feedback, uh, community feedback and, and suggestions and 
Um, yeah, man, I feel like you're up 20, 24 seven, honestly, the, the, uh, handling the community. And that's kind of why I brought it up, right? Like, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, we have people tuning in that have watched Reimagined. And, and I think we've talked about a lot of projects and a lot of people and leaders and kind of, you know, the, from the tech side, but it, it, you know, that one saying used to be like, um, you know, build it and they will come. Like, I don't know if that actually plays a role. Like, like you mentioned earlier, you could have like the best tech, but no community, no support, you know, nobody's going to use it. You could have some, you know, challenging tech, but a lot of resources, education, you know, whatever the case is, and, and you'll, and you can drive users and then people value that as opposed to having something that's shinier and better. Um, and that necessarily doesn't always, you know, uh, result in, in, uh, people flocking, you know, to, to this emerging tech, whatever the case is. Um, and that's why I kind of why I brought it up and I've seen you super active and, you know, it's good to highlight that because uh, when people are thinking about developing on a blockchain, where to look, how to build, you know, I think, you know, Icon obviously is, is a great spot uh, because of, of the community and because of the team that's very engaged. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. Like uh, Balance got like 10% of the circulating supply of ICX and deposits within the first two months. I thought that was, that like really blew me away in terms of- Yeah. Like no, totally. I, I heard that too. And like, that's, that's nuts, you know, um, which it's great. Obviously people believe in it. That's an engaged uh, community right there. You know, if 10% of circulating supply is going to, you know, jump into a DeFi project within, within two crazy. months of launch. I mean, that's definitely like a sizable uh, support from the community. For sure. And, and let's talk about kind of this application layer. We talked about Icon 2.0, kind of the evolution, the features that are being added and, and kind of the interoperability, right? Um, that you guys are going to go, you know, cross chain and, you know, currently starting off with Polkadot and then there's other, you know, other chains in the works. Um, so let's talk about this application layer and the growth behind it. Um, there's a few projects actually, you know, and, and I'm going to highlight these because they're adding value, they're in development, um, there's traction, there's momentum, there's, there's users, right? And people are People are talking about it. So first, let's talk about maybe like uh, let's talk about Bridge. Like, right. how does that add value? Like, what 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 project is uh, what are they doing uh, to contribute, and, and how does it work? And what are some of the the key features of that to the to Icon? Right. Yeah. So if, uh, for for those listening, if you want to check it out, it's at it's at bridgepay.money. Um, and and really, I think Br Bridge is a, a huge component of of our ecosystem that I'm really excited about. Um, you know, we really are trying to build our products with user experience and user uh, user interface front of mind. Um, and I was even having someone in, in the balance chat room comment about like, you know, just how much easier it's been to use balance versus the other DeFi products that he's touched. Um, and and the, what place bridge comes into play is, is a seamless on and offboarding experience into a DeFi ecosystem where it's essentially a, it's a wallet, uh, and it has on, a fiat on and off ramp built into it. But, you know, the way you log into the wallet is just with your email. So people, you know, a user comes into bridge, it's either a widget or it's on the bridge website. They enter their email, they get a confirmation link and boom, they have a wallet. They don't even know it. All they know is that they, to, to log into bridge, they need to type in an email and click the confirmation link in their email. And, and that's through our partners um, over at magic, uh, the magic SDK, great guys to work with and really, uh, you know, love using their technology. Um, so from there, they, you know, a user logs in with the email, they can click deposit, and then they'll be able to deposit cash linking uh, their bank account using Plaid. And what'll happen in the back end is we'll actually mint them a stable coin um, back by the dollars that they just deposited. And then they'll be able to take that stable coin and use it in any of uh, Icon DeFi apps. And then the longer term vision is to include all blockchains that are connected via BTP. Um, into the bridge wallet. So this can kind of be like a user's like one-stop shop to, to use like many different protocols. And they don't even necessarily know that they're using blockchain. Um, you know, with Icon's uh, fee sharing structure, we deposit a very small amount of ICX into the bridge wallet. And then that, uh, what's it called? And then we cover like 99% or 100% of the fees of the transaction fees for transferring the stable coins. So again, the user doesn't even necessarily know that they're using blockchain. They just know like, all right, I deposited cash into my bridge account and through my bridge account, I can use this thing, omm.finance and earn, you know, whatever percentage yield on, on my assets. And, and that's all they need to know. And it's quite easy. So that's and really the goal that we're doing is like trying to grow the pie, right? Like not fight for like this tiny uh, space that we have right now, right? There's like very few users existing in the industry. Yeah, go ahead. And, and, and why is that? Um, even before Balance launched, like, 
your core focus ultimately from the beginning was uh, UI UX, right? Like we, we yeah. and you know, we, we have um, our audience here that may not understand why that's important at this stage of the game in terms of like UI UX and, and adding, you know, the flow that that's user friendly product market fit. And how important is that? How important is, is kind of what you're just discussing in terms of that, uh, the concept of onboarding users, fiat, you know, using your email, you know, connecting with Plaid, which, you know, people are familiar with from the traditional side. How important is that, I guess, for like to, to further adoption? Um, I, it, we'll just stick with the DeFi ecosystem, but how important is kind of this flow for the average user that's like, you know, trying to get into, into crypto, trying to understand it, um, and you guys are really trying to uh, make it not complicated for them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's extremely important, right? Like people uh, have very short attention spans these days, you know, like it's just, it is what it is. It's kind of the sign of the times. And uh, you know, if there's any sort of barriers or frustrations when they're trying to do something, unless there's like a serious amount of money waiting on the other side, you know, they're not going to like, they're not going to like fight through it and struggle through it to get like, you know, five to 10% yield. So for sure. To really make it that, that seamless that you just like click a couple of buttons, you hook up your bank account and you're good to go. I think that's like really important uh, to get, you know, DeFi uh, in its place is like, I, I almost view it as like a back end uh, infrastructure for, uh, you know, a future financial system. For sure. For sure. And, and, and so we're just talking about onboarding, getting people, you know, into the uh, community, into the ecosystem, uh, leveraging crypto, minting stable coins. Um, I want to talk about, I guess, OMM, which I don't think is launched yet, but I think that's in the, right. It's in the works. Yeah. So um, can you talk at a high level about what OMM does and what that's going to offer? Is that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not leading OM. Uh, That's my colleague, Dakey, but you know, I'm happy to talk about it. It's uh, you know, a money market product with a focus on user experience. Um, You know, they're going to be kind of the pioneers of the bridge wallet when it first launches. That's kind of like the first major use case that we had in mind for bridge was uh, OMM Finance. And, you know, like that, that's really the goal is they're going to integrate, uh, you know, the fiat backed stable coin, and then integrate like another, a, a number of other cryptocurrencies that you'll be able to bar, you know, you'll be able to get leverage against your crypto and, uh, you know, um, and then normal, like non crypto folks, that's really kind of the broader target market for, for OMM is, uh, you know, the, the non crypto person who's just looking for a higher yield in their savings account. Right. Like I remember my dad was talking to me. He was like so excited. I was, you know, I actually uh, live at home now and then, um, you know, I've been staying with my parents a lot throughout, uh, throughout uh, the pandemic. And, you know, I've been going on a lot of walks with my dad and like, uh, you know, um, he was so excited about 37 basis points of interest. He was like, <laughs> Antonio, you got to try that. There's this new high yield savings account that I found. It offers you 0.37%. That's almost double what I get on SoFi. I'm like, oh, wow, like, that's amazing. Like, you should check out uh, this thing, IconFi, <laughs> or this other app, Celsius. Or, I mean, like, these are all CFI solutions. They're just like easy for, you know, kind of like, yeah. easy form, but still, I mean, like, there's so many, uh, like, the fact that he was so excited by 37 basis points. I mean, I'm looking forward to showing him OMM when, when that launches and how awesome. easy it is to use. No, no, I mean, yeah. And that's kind of what, like, I'm really bringing this up, right? I think, there's a lot of videos of you talking about icon and, and kind of from technical perspective and kind of consensus and um, all this other things. I, I, the reason for bringing you on this time around or, or th- this topic was because I want people to like learn and like understand how these like parts are coming together. Right. We just hear DeFi, we hear open finance, we hear blockchain. Um, and I'm trying to put all the pieces together for them to understand like how blockchain plays a role, like that foundational layer. And not only that, what, what our partners are building, what our friends are building to that's relatable to the real life. You just brought it up, you know, same thing with my parents too. Like they're excited of earning, you know, 25 basis points, right. Or like not even 10 basis points. Um, and there's these other solutions, um, that, you know, provide an opportunity to earn more on, on your assets, as you mentioned, just like a savings account. And it's really not that complicated um, as you guys are building the the components and parts to onboard somebody to, you know, anybody can log in and like, you know, move their money into an app. And then you guys provide kind of the backend uh, applications for them to earn interest or do whatever they wish kind of in the space. Um, So again, I'm just highlighting that to to really showcase that it's not that foreign. Like you guys are working on, you know, the user flow and then there's all these other options that 
uh, really you probably don't even know it's on blockchain. Um, and it's peer to peer and it's decentralized and which is great. Um, so let's talk about, uh, so OMM is, is a lending platform. Let's talk about balanced network. Like how does that fit into, into these other applications? Yeah. So balance is kind of that base layer, uh, what's it called? Uh, DeFi infrastructure. I feel like I've been saying that a lot. Um, and, uh, what's it called? So it, it has, uh, you know, an automated market maker decentralized exchange to support trading of icon based assets and, and anything that comes in through BTP. Um, but primarily it's a synthetic asset platform where we have, uh, developed like a novel, uh, pegging mechanism where you can, uh, so you deposit ICX and you can borrow against it so far, the first asset that we've added, um, and kind of want to make like a stable platform before we add any more assets, but is, uh, the balanced dollar. So it's very similar to kind of like MakerDAO plus Uniswap in one platform, because when we allow people to mint these synthetic assets, such as the, you know, the balanced dollar, if we want to like balance Bitcoin in the future, we want somewhere that people can trade them immediately. Great. And that's, you know, and that's where kind of the AMM comes into play. Yeah, no, awesome. And that's kind of a, a big thing uh, for quite some time. You guys have been working on it for, for quite a while and, and um, had a successful launch. And obviously that's kind of a result of, of, of community believers, enthusiasts, um, how does all of how do these three applications drive value, I guess, to the network or even like the token holders that are involved? Um, you know, right off the top, obviously, it's 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 attracting and also retaining um, it, its community, which right. you know drives more value. What are your thoughts there on you know why these play an important role in kind of icon its ecosystem community? And this kind of stems for all blockchains in general, but you know when people were looking to get into you know get into crypto like you got to look at what what what's being built how secure it is you know privacy like what's been going on and i feel like icon obviously has you know everything in the bag in terms of uh, a solid spot for people to kind of dive into the DeFi ecosystem if they wish yeah absolutely i mean i think that's what we're trying to build over here and i think like uh just kind of generally speaking like you mentioned you know for any blockchain i think like you know, debt and leverage are they're pretty essential to, you know, what makes the world go around, uh, you know, and like giving cryptocurrency holders the ability to get leverage against their assets open, unlocks a ton more value. I mean, I think right now there's like 15 million balance dollars in circulation. Those are treated uh, as $1 by, by people in the community. That's an extra $15 million of, of value that's being exchanged on the ICON network. It's unlocked, right? you're unlocking value from the existing assets on the network. And that's really the role of debt and leverage within an ecosystem. So I think it's important to have these kind of base layer DeFi Lego pieces um, built these building blocks in, in any public blockchain with a cryptocurrency. Um, and I think, you know, what we're trying to do at Icon is make it as user-friendly as possible. The, the applications that we're talking about, are, the, are those composable? Like, can people Absolutely. integrate that, integrate that into, uh, and maybe you could elaborate a little bit on like what, you know, the Lego, you know, money Legos and kind of composability is and how um, that plays into the application layer that that were the different dApps that we're talking about. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think like just even just giving people like developers a playground to start building different things. I mean, I've had like a lot of people reaching out to me in DM, like asking me about like, you know, certain balanced APIs. And I've seen, you know, there's people like deploying uh smart contracts that take advantage of arbitrage on the balanced decks and they're like fighting, you know, there's like a couple of different people who, who have, who have gone and done that. And like, uh, you know, they're competing for, for arbitrage profits. And I think it's just really interesting to see, you know, a, like, you know, leverage unlocks more value, but it also unlocks like the potential of the community where I see a lot more people taking initiative to build things, building like statistics pages, building bots, trying, you know, give, give people like the opportunity to start, you know, putting in more work and start making more money. And, and a lot of the times they'll do it. So I think it's uh, been a great way for uh, us to unlock both more value for the icon ecosystem and unlock the potential of our community. And how do you see, we're talking a lot about DeFi, financial services, products, solutions, the innovation from CFI to DeFi, the innovation from, you know, centralized to decentralized. Um, People are probably wondering, like, do they have to go fully decentralized? How do you see CFI and DeFi? Can they cohabitate? Can, can they, you know, operate together? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think like uh, having like a friendly user interface that sits on top of a DeFi protocol, like even friendlier than what you have for balanced, but something that's like, you know, just kind of deposit your ICX and we'll do like the best we can with it and deposit in these different areas to try and maximize your yield, like something kind of more centralized like that, I think will absolutely have a place. I mean, they're already having a place with those applications that I named earlier, like, you know, IconFi and BlockFi and Nexo and Celsius, like, you know, they take in assets uh, from, from their users and then in a centralized fashion, they try and optimize their yield. And a lot of that I'm sure comes from DeFi protocols. I'm sure comes from lending to uh, VCs and hedge funds that, uh, that use DeFi protocols. Um, so yeah, I'd say it's already starting to happen that way. Nice. Nice. Um, one other question we're talking about, um, you know, giving the opportunity for people to innovate, experiment, um, try things out, right. But build some, something cool. How does Icon, how does a community, um, how do we get more developers like to, from web 2.0 to 3.0, you know, training, um, obviously like moving forward, you know, the devs might be native to web three, you know, web 3.0 and kind of developing these, these various dApps and, and applications. How, how do you see Icon uh, onboarding or, supporting like the developer community so that they can continue to build what are some of the efforts that you guys have seen you know worked and or, or you know and or what else would you like to do or that you think we should do you know to to attract more people because there's a shortage of talent like overall yeah, for sure. um and uh, you know there's computer science programs you know at the university level there's youtube now um and then obviously icon has a lot of like material educational content um, tutorials, webinars, you know, all the above. How do you guys see supporting kind of the developer community to get people to attract people to, to develop? Not, not main, mainly on Icon, but building these types of cool products. Yeah, I, I would say like uh, just going back to, again, like the Lego pieces, building blocks, space layer infrastructure, you know, wh whichever buzzword you choose, um, you know, like you, you give people an opportunity to start kind of like having fun building stuff, right? Like, it's really daunting and overwhelming to say like, oh, you know what? I like Icon and I'm just going to build like a whole DeFi application and market it and get users and do all this stuff like that is daunting. But, you know, ha uh, have someone uh, like myself and, you know, our core team, uh, core contributors to Balanced start, you know, working together on building this. And then it's a little less daunting when, you know, all you really is like, oh, look, there's like this decentralized exchange and I can maybe build an arbitrage bot and see if I can make some money like not going to be a huge time sink. It's not a huge commitment. It's an opportunity they can kind of like challenge themselves. Like in my view, developers like a challenge and they like something fun and interesting, right? Like there's a lot of money flowing around for developers. Like, you know, if they want, if they just care about money, they can go get a job at like, you know, Google or Apple or Facebook and absolutely crush it. Right. Um, you know, it comes down to giving them that playground at a place that, you know, they can come and have fun and build cool stuff while also making some money. Of course, the money does need to be there. But it also, I think, like what is going to attract people from un other industries is the freedom and the fun that that kind of blockchain can afford uh, with like kind of this DAO mentality kind of open source environment. No, yeah, you're right. I think you know, and, and you you know, hit the nail on the head. And I asked this question because we have you know people looking for career changes, you know, looking to find something new. We have existing developers. We have, you know, I guess future developers, you know, watching this conference. And, and I think it's important for them to know, like, you know, the, the, the tools and resources that are available if you want to try some stuff out. Um, and you're right. It, it shouldn't be that daunting. Um, there's, you know, a lot of these applications that you can leverage and, and everything's open source. Um, and, and so that's good. And, and, you know, I'm trying to get more people excited to, to come into the space and, and continue developing kind of in these efforts. So, um, you know, I, I think we've come up on time here. Uh, last question, like outside of uh, maybe DeFi, just kind of blockchain in general, crypto, um, what excites you about the future? You, you're actively involved, you're building products, shipping product, uh, building solutions, very engaged in the community. Like what excites you about the future? I just heard like, um, I forget, uh, was it El Salvador, uh, Ecuador, El Salvador that like, was it El Salvador? Yeah. 
that have made like crypto, you know, or Bitcoin um, the legal tender. Like that's pretty exciting. Like what, what excites you in this space, you know, five, 10 years out? Yeah. I mean, I really am looking forward to, uh, to adoption as like kind of lame and, and, and tacky as that sounds, but really looking forward to the point where it is like g- genuinely easy for my parents to, to use the products that, that I've been putting so much time and effort into where it's like actually reasonable for them to participate. Um, and I think with that, you know, the industry is going to need to be cleaned up a lot. There's going to be, need to be a lot of, uh, you know, it needs to mature, right? Like the market needs to mature, like having one tweet from Elon Musk or something tank the market by like five to 10%. Like, you know, we, we need to have a more mature market, more mature participants and, you know, we'll get there for sure. It's just going to take some time. And I'm really looking forward to like the level of adoption where, uh, you know, these markets are, uh, you know, kind of safe and, and usable for, uh, you know, average people as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's just going to be an alternative, you know, way to generate, you know, generate yields, earn an income. Um, a much more efficient way to do it, absolutely, than the existing system we have. Exactly. And you come from, you know, institutional background in, in finance, and I come from banking. So we kind of, you know, understand the lay of the land there and like what's happening. And, and yeah, it's kind of scary. And you're right, like this whole peer to peer thing, this decentralized uh, approach is is very valuable and i think uh you're, you're putting in the effort uh you're making an impact as much as you can um and you're right our parents you know that that, that generation um you know we'll, we'll get them on board and, and you guys are putting the pieces together here so it, it's been great um where can people learn more uh or follow you know the updates the insights from uh icon or balanced uh you know to continue like following yeah, absolutely. I mean, follow me on Twitter, uh, Benny underscore options, and you can follow balanced uh, at balanced Dow. And uh, yeah, you know, excited to have uh, excited to have you part of the community and really appreciate the opportunity to come on again, Adam. Thanks again. Yeah, no, no, for sure. You've been you've been a great friend of ours and, and mine and, you know, based here out of San Francisco. We used to have a couple beers um, and we've come we've come a long way um, It's you know, I don't know, three, four meetups a week and conference Back circuits. In the old days. Yeah, the good old days, pizza and beer. And, and yeah. man, you know, I'm very fortunate for those. You can, evenings, survive, so. uh, you can survive your whole life only on crypto meetups. Just for- <laughs> <laughs> man, those were, those were like very valuable though. Like yeah. I just went to the Bitcoin conference and seen a lot of people from the previous conference and meetups, right? And, and, and just industry stuff. And it's still small, but, but it's definitely grown. Um, and yeah, a lot of the, go, going back to this peer-to-peer thing, this decentralized aspect, like, you know, hitting up these events was just like that, a very uh, community driven, like I had to meet and greet and, and say what's up and learn about so many projects, you know, met, met a lot of colleagues in the space. Um, but, you know, we've always been partners here and, and you've supported our, our education program and, and Mouse Belt in general. And so we're lucky to have you guys as a sponsor and just a supporter uh, across, you know, across teams, between teams. So without further ado, Scott, uh, obviously we'd love to have you back. Um, if not you, somebody from the team. And, you know, after this, we'll go ahead and sign off. Everybody tuning in to Reimagine 2021. This is Scott Smiley uh, from the Icon, I don't know, Network Foundation um, and, and also uh, Balance Network. So check them out. They're doing a lot of good things over there. Um, and hopefully you're enjoying the conference and, and we'll, we'll see you again. Thanks, Scott. We'll talk again. Thanks. See you, Adam.